you know, there's this great tradition about the Jewish children when they grew up that you were sharing with me. Do you mind telling us more about that and what they did to try to be called by a rabbi? I love this. So this gave me, this was a, this was kind of a, a, an eye opener for me when I kind of heard this. So, so Jewish boys, when they were seven to 10, they would, they would, by that point would have learned the five books of the first five books of the Bible, the Torah. And then by the age of 10 to 14, they would start to learn more. They would be apprenticed from their father. Um, if their father was a craftsman, a sandal maker, a fisherman, they would be following in the footsteps of their father. But there would be local rabbis would be traveling from town to town as, as itinerant preachers looking for five followers, five disciples, that he would find worthy to become like him. So this is the context by which Jesus enters the picture. You know, they would have known, the Jewish boys, the Jewish men that Jesus first called would have known like, oh yeah, this is, this is the model of the Jewish life that was witnessed to me. And I heard this beautiful witness about this that I, I thought would be worth sharing here. But so after kind of pouring his life into these Jewish boys, he would there would become a, a, an inflection point where mm. the discernment had been taken. Are these guys ready to take the step to become like me? And so they <laughs> they come to me like Matthew. Ma Matthew, are, uh, what's your father do? Oh, he, he's a he's a sandal maker. Is he a good sandal maker? He's he's the best rabbi. Mm. You're going to be a great sandal maker. Mm. And then he would do that again with another boy. But then he would come to the one who was chosen and say, Simon. What's your father do? He's a fisherman. Is he a good fisherman? Yeah, he's great. He's going to continue to be a fisherman, but you come follow me. And what like a celebration yeah. that would have been in the family to hear those words, come follow me. So here comes Jesus on the scene. And I think that's where we start to think about well, how is he calling us? He's setting the stage for this new vision of what discipleship means. Yeah. And I think it's profound. And I think you can speak this. We talked a little bit about this, Jenny. But when he comes to those first mm -hmm. disciples, those beautiful reflections in scripture, what are they doing? They're yeah. fishing, yeah, right? Absolutely. They're tax collecting. So what does that mean? They're, mm -hmm. They weren't chosen. So he's choosing the unchosen to change the world. Oh, like <laughs> yeah. that's our call. Isn't that beautiful? And, and, and what's beauty, beautiful about it is like, it's not just 10 to 14 year old Jewish boys anymore. It's all of us, men, women, followers of the person of Jesus. I'm so happy you said that because when I started working at the parish I'm working at right now, um, the first thing I got to do was get to know the people. And oh. I was so edified from the young child all the way up to the ones that had gray and white hair and just how faithful they were and how much they knew our Lord. And to see what you just said, that He calls all people of all ages, mm. that essentially the Lord was calling the B team, showing us that we are all worthy of being His followers. And I discovered that right away. And that's the beauty of a parish, is mm. that you get to see these people in discipleship at all different phases of life, at every season, whether you're single, married, or whether you have children or you don't have children, whether you're young or old, we're all following the Lamb.